Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, a great pleasure uh, to um, welcome you to this public lecture celebrating the inauguration of the Biomera platform and uh, MicroCT. We have just uh, had the ribbon cutting ceremony uh, at uh, the Biomera facility and um, I uh, had the great pleasure uh, in um, inaugurating this facility in the presence of not only the president of the Cyprus Institute, Professor Stavros Malas, but also the scientific director of Sesame Synchrotron, Dr. Andrea Lausi, uh, Professor Caterina Biscari, the director of Alba Synchrotron, uh, who is our speaker tonight, uh, and also His Excellency uh, Ambassador Ferran, Ambassador of Spain uh, to Cyprus, uh, as well as representation from the Ministry uh, of uh, Research, Innovation uh, and Digital uh, Policy, uh, with uh, uh, the presence and representation uh, of the Deputy Ministry uh, by um, uh, Dr. Elena Gabriel. Um, so today, uh, Biomera Platform uh, and MicroCT is operational for your structural imaging needs, and we welcome uh, discussions um, on your structural imaging uh, needs uh, uh, from uh, this uh, national strategic infrastructure. And without further ado, I would like to uh, call uh, to the podium uh, the president of the Cyprus Institute, Stavros Malas, for his opening address. Thank you, Kissy. Ambassador, welcome again. Very nice to have you um, here. Uh, welcome also everybody from Sesame, the Materna, Paterna, whichever way you like it, the sister organization of MicroCity. So, and um, Mrs. Gavrilidou, welcome. You are paying for this, your organization rather is paying for this. Now, we need to get used to this because uh, this institute, um, uh, the last uh, few months has been working very busy to um, bring in many other infrastructures in the call that uh, has been announced. So it is becoming uh, a bit of a habit for us to um, bring in with the successes of uh, researchers like QC many national infrastructures. So um, for those of you, Ambassador, probably you're not know, familiar, but uh, the research ecosystem of Cyprus uh, in its modern form, it's only 20 years old. Okay, and that's the age of our research ecosystem. Uh, and during the last 20 years, the strength of research in Cyprus has grown so much that Cyprus actually is the, um, the most successful country in EU funding in relation to what is contributing to the budget. So that is clearly the fact that um, the fact of the efforts of many researchers, the competitive research that we are proposing. Um, the Institute um, is indeed the most successful organization in Cyprus in securing company funding, meaning that there is excellence. Quite often I hear uh, that several centers of excellence have been created. You don't create a center of excellence on paper by just giving it the name. You have to prove it. And if you're producing uh, about 200 publications per year, some of them in places like science and nature by young investigators grown up and trained in this institution, then that's what I call excellence. Uh, and we are very proud, and of course, um, very proud of the uh, imaginative way that some of our researchers are applying to get some money, like QC. 
QC applied um, for this infrastructure under the health pillar. She was competing with the doctors, the molecular biologists, to get an infrastructure as a bioarchaeologist, and she succeeded in getting it. So clearly there was some substance in that proposal. And, but of course, it is a national infrastructure, and this is why many molecular biologists, uh, geophysicists, and others are engaged uh, as, as part of this collaboration so that we enhance the, um, the use of it. Uh, and indeed, it, it is not only the ethos built into this proposal of uh, developing these infrastructures uh, as national infrastructures, but it is the actual philosophy of the Cyprus Institute. The Cyprus Institute has a lot of infrastructures, and we are now opening them up to collaborators, to industry, to come in and use it, because this is the only way we can make um, the ecosystem work better and creating more synergies. So with that, I want to uh, welcome you again, look forward to your lecture, and uh, obviously looking forward to see the results of this highly valued piece of equipment. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Malas. We now move uh, to the opening address uh, from the Deputy Ministry uh, of Research, Innovation and Digital Policy, uh, delivered uh, by uh, Ms. Eleana Gavril. Ms. Gavril, please. Thank you, Kirsi. Unfortunately, the Deputy Minister could not make it, so I'm here uh, on his behalf. Dear President of the Cyprus Institute, Your Excellency, Ambassador of Spain to Cyprus, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be here with you today, representing the Deputy Minister of Research, Innovation and Digital Policy, as we have gathered to celebrate the launch of the Biomera Platform for Biosciences and Human Health. This remarkable initiative has brought forth a state-of-the-art, custom-designed micro-CT facility at the Cyprus Institute, signaling the beginning of a new chapter in scientific exploration and unlocking tremendous potentials in the fields of biosciences and human health, as well as any scientific field with material samples. The establishment of the Biomera Platform for Biosciences and Human Health symbolizes the Institute's commitment to scientific progress and innovation, as well as to international collaboration. This achievement has been made possible through the co-financing of the European Regional Development Fund and the Republic of Cyprus through the Research and Innovation Foundation, demonstrating our support for the development of new research units and the pursuit of high-quality research activities. The strategic importance of this infrastructure goes beyond its intrinsic value in advancing research in the field of structural imaging. It also serves as a getaway, as it enables new synchrotron users to utilize transnational synchrotron facilities to which Cyprus is an active member, such as SESAMI and CERN. The lecture tonight will highlight the advances and impacts of synchrotron science in the European and global context, something that Biomera Platform will continue to engage with and enable in the years to come. Indeed, it is true that research infrastructures play a pivotal role in driving scientific progress and fostering innovation, providing the necessary tools, equipment and resources that empower researchers to conduct their research effectively. With this strategic focus, the Ministry of Research, Innovation and Digital Policy has put the research infrastructures high on the R&I agenda and is currently working towards maximizing the utilization of research infrastructures in Cyprus. Additionally, I would like to announce that the development of a dedicated platform for facilitating the sharing of the research infrastructures that is processing well and will soon be launched. Biomera will be part of this platform and hopefully all the research infrastructures of the Cyprus Institute. Lastly, I extend, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to all those involved in the organization of today's event and I am confident that the Biomera will serve as a catalyst for the interesting discoveries and transformative research in the years to come. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, uh, Ms. Gabriel. Uh, it's a great pleasure uh, to have you here uh, and uh, have the um, Deputy Ministry uh, represented. And uh, I would also like to thank uh, very much indeed uh, the Research and Innovation Foundation of Cyprus uh, for uh, funding uh, this uh, project and platform uh, for this national strategic infrastructure. Now we have the great pleasure uh, to hear the opening address uh, of uh, His Excellency Ambassador of Spain, uh, Ambassador Ferran, uh, and uh, on this occasion I would also very much like to thank uh, Spain, uh, the Embassy of Spain uh, in uh, Cyprus for their generous uh, sponsorship of this inaugural lecture uh, by Professor Caterina Biscari uh, and uh, the reception to follow. Uh, so, uh, with uh, great pleasure, I invite to the podium uh, Your Excellency, uh, Ambassador Ferran, please. Good afternoon. President Malas, representative of the Ministry of Innovation, Research and Infra Digital Infrastructure, members of the Cyprus Institutes and dear guests. It is for me a pleasure and a very special occasion to be here this afternoon with you in, in the Cyprus Institute. It is for the Spanish Embassy to thank the, the Institute of Cyprus for, uh, for being a, such a good collaborator. We definitely we work uh, with many partners here in Cyprus, trying to promote culture, the science, and to, and to, uh, to foster relation between our countries. And definitely the Institute of Cyprus is one of key partners. So it's also my duty and my pleasure to, to thank you for, for, for this cooperation has been going for these years, and we definitely um, think we could be improving for coming times. It is also a pleasure for me to, to for Spain to be able to bring Caterina Biscari, which is a leading director of one top uh, in, in, uh, um, investigation facilities in Spain, the, Synch the Alba Synchrotron. I'm not at all an expert on that, so I will not uh, elaborate very much. She will explain us much better than I or what it's about. But we are very glad that we have uh, been able to have this kind of collaboration this afternoon, and we very much look forward to improve in other fields. Thank you very much to you. Thank you, Your Excellency, and uh, we look forward to further collaborations, uh, and uh, we are uh, indeed uh, very pleased uh, to have initiated uh, this collaboration this year, and, and thank you and uh, all your staff uh, for this close uh, collaboration. It is now my pleasure uh, to introduce uh, to you uh, the speaker, who of course needs no introduction, but a few words if you uh, allow me. Professor Caterina Biscari is the director of the Alba Synchrotron, the Spanish National Light Source, since 2012, which has managed um, its development as a large multidisciplinary research facility with international projection and is now planning its uh, upgrade to fourth generation light source. She is an experimental physicist with experience in accelerator physics, recognized for her important contributions in the design, construction, and operation of particle accelerators. She worked in the past at CERN and at LNF INFN. Um, she has been and is member of several international advisory committees and boards, including CERN, SLAC, DESI, and KEK, uh, strongly involved in uh, the inception and in the evolution of LEAPS, the association of synchrotrons and uh, field electron lasers of Europe. And on a personal note, it has been really a great pleasure to interact uh, with Professor Biscari uh, at the Sesame Synchrotron Council. Uh, she is also 
uh, the representative of Spain, an observer at uh, the Sesame Council. So without further ado, and thanking Katerina very much for coming to join us uh, today um, and uh, 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 to deliver uh, the inauguration of Biomera Platform and MicroCT public lecture uh, with the topic ALBA and Science for Sustainability in Synchrotrons. Katerina, thank you. So let us um, get. No, it was to, it was ah, that. I it think. was the, yeah. It was this one. Here. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. Please. The floor is yours. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Kirsi, for the words. Excelencia, President of, of Cyprus Institute, dear Kirsi, dear Andrea, it's really a pleasure, a honor to be here today. And uh, it's my first time in Cyprus. I hope it's not the last one. And I was thinking, having here the, the ambassador, you should fight to have direct flights between Spain and Cyprus. I, I think that <laughs> would help also in the interaction. So uh, today I'm talking uh, in front of people who know a lot about uh, uh, synchrotrons and science, but uh, uh, since there are someone who may not be so familiar, let me do something which is uh, dedicated to general public, so that uh, to, to make our activity understandable also from, by those of you who are not uh, scientists. And um, first of all, where I, I come from, ALBA has been mentioned several times, is a synchrotron, is a, a national public institution uh, which is in operation since uh, 2012, and it is uh, funded by the central government of Spain by 50% and the regional government of Catalonia by the other 50%. It's therefore fully a national fund, but uh, it's fully international, not only from the staff, but especially from the users and the collaboration. So this is an important uh, message I want to give also to the Cyprus Institute. I mean, having an infrastructure, whatever it is, it opens bridges with the rest of the world. And uh, let me start with what is synchrotron. If, if you go to uh, uh, Wikipedia and look for the uh, word synchrotron, it says it's an accelerator. Uh, which accelerates particles uh, in a circular trajectory, and it's true. And if you ask uh, chat G GPT, it says it's a research infrastructure which is used for understanding the matter. Both things are right. But the word synchrotron is dedicated, is the, the real uh, meaning is the fact that uh, there are the uh, particles high energy particles, which were, when they do car trajectories, emit light. And this light is the synchrotron light. What is called synchrotron? Because the first time it was seen, measured, understood, was in the synchrotron accelerator. And this image you see here is the image of a black hole, where there is synchrotron light, because there are charged particles which emit light. And uh, uh, so the synchrotron light is in the universe and stars. Uh, but the good thing is that in the Earth, we are able to do, to produce synchrotron light, which uh, we use for understanding the matter and that we control very well in our synchrotrons, in our accelerators. So in the universe, we have an example of a black hole in ALBA. This is ALBA seen from above. Also, we do this magic, but it's a natural, a natural phenomenon. And it is a, a part, sorry, it goes too fast or too slow, a, a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. A, all of us know we have radio waves, infrared, RF, um, a visible light, ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma rays. This is the same thing. The only difference is the wavelength, the length of, of the wave, or what is the same, the frequency or the energy of the photons. But it's the same phenomena. 
And just to, to, to talk of something that everybody understands very well is the light, the visible light. Uh, the visible light, we all know that uh, if we were inside this uh, studio of Velázquez, that the, the same light is reflected in the mirror, it uh, crosses the crystals, it is absorbed by the black velvet, the, all the frequencies are absorbed of the visible light except the red in the red flower of the menina. This, we know that it is like that. And how do we know that the flower is a red flower? Because the photons that are not uh, absorbed, but are, they reach the, our eyes. In our eyes, we have the detectors, thousands of cones, wonderful detectors. And these detectors react for, with the photon and send their signal to our brain. And if everything works in this system, the eyes, the brain, we know that it is a red flower. So uh, we could do that, but with our eyes are limited to the visible light, at certain frequencies. We want to go beyond and above. And this is what we can do with the synchrotron. We go down to the infrared and then up to the uh, X-rays. And the smaller the wavelength, the smaller the element, the detail you can see, you can understand in the matter. So what we do is that we produce this synchrotron light, which is produced by the electrons accelerated. They go, we send these photons to the sample we want to study, the interaction goes, the interaction um, uh, re uh, reaction goes down to the detector, the detector sent to the computer, which has the software, the brain, and then gives us the property. So the, the effect is the same. The only thing is that while our eyes are wonderful, our brain is also able to do different processes in parallel, here we have to uh, specialize on a single technique. Now, how we do the, uh, the synchrotron light? With electrons accelerator. This is an example of uh, an accelerator where you see this yellow part are the electrons accelerated up to the, almost to the uh, velocity of light. And when they go through the magnetic field in the red dipole, they emit light. And uh, this is a, a simplified, this is a real picture of a, an accelerator, the, the tunnel of the ALBA uh, synchrotron, which is 300 meters long. And it's a 3 GB machine. And uh, you can see the complexity of the technology. This technology is something that uh, needs, uh, first of all, needs people that think about that, that uh, say which are the characteristics, design the things, and then the construction, the installation, and the maintenance, and the operation. This is very important. And uh, I want to show here the, how ALBA has been um, uh, performing during this decade of uh, operation with uh, an uh, excellence, uh, which at the beginning, of course, when things are going, are um, put in, into operation is more complicated, but then, we have all, more than 98% of availability of our 6,000 hours per year. And this is because everything works, and especially because the people are there to solve the problems whenever they come. And uh, then the light is emitted, is emitted and then is sent uh, uh, towards the experimental hall, where it is manipulated because there are different frequencies, and then uh, down to the, it goes down to the sample where it interacts with the frequency, the energy that we need to study the sample. And the result of the interaction goes to the detector and then from the analysis of the data, it, uh, uh, you, you can deduce which are the properties you are looking for. Now, as we have seen with the visible light, the X-rays have many different kinds of interaction. We'll not go through all of them, but there are several mm, in kind of interaction depending on the frequency, on the energy, on the matter, on how it re the, the, the photons reach the, the sample. So what we do is that, as I said before, we specialize on one technique. And for that technique, we build 
one beam line. It has been mentioned several times, bits, for example, the beam line of, of uh, Sesame. In, in, in ALBA, we have in this moment 10 operating beam lines, two in commissioning that will start the operation next year, and two more in construction. Each of them dedicated to a different uh, technique. Also, the beam line, you can see here, are complicated technologies, uh, everything under vacuum, because this manipulation of the light is not something that you do easily. You need the uh, crystals, monochromators, uh, uh, mirrors, is something that it takes a lot of technology and each beam line has a special design. These are examples and this is another example and here is the list of the available uh, techniques that we have at ALBA in this moment. Now, what we do with this? What we do with this uh, precious instrument? We do science, we do applied science mainly. Life science, Chemistry, material science, electronic and magnetic structure of matter. This is how we divide our science, our scientific activity in ALBA. And each beam line is, is mm, more or less uh, uh, determined by one of these different sections. And I want to mention another thing that we have at ALBA since um, last year. We had an inauguration, cutting the ribbon also there, for GEMCA. GEMCA is Joint Electron Microscope Center at ALBA. And this looks very much with, uh, similar to what you are doing here because it's a complementary technique. These are electron microscopes. Instead of using the X-rays, we use the electrons. They are, um, are, um, these microscopes are built in industry. You can buy the microscope, so it's easier than doing a full beam line. But it's complementary to the beam lines at ALBA. And this J stays for joint, joint electron microscope center, because the microscopes are not owned by ALBA, by, by other institutions. Of course, we have the, the space and the opportunity to have there these two microscopes, one dedicated to life science, one dedicated to material science. By the way, this picture you see on the, on the right are atoms, are real atoms. You can go down to the atoms because with the electrons, you can go down to resolutions. You have to have thin samples, so you have to cut the samples, what you don't need to do with X-rays, but uh, you have the possibility to go down to very low resolution, which means that uh, you complement the, uh, the, the, um, the techniques. And here you have the logo of the different institutions that are participating. So this is something, uh, and the, the importance of the collaboration, this is the, the, we inaugurated this center on the 24th of February. You can see here the list of logos, as we saw today. And this is important at the local level, in this case where RDF funds are funded by the region of Catalonia and the centers are all in Catalonia, but of course the users come from everywhere, starting from those from the rest of Spain. And it's important at the local level, but it's important also at the international level. And here I want to introduce LIPS, uh, which is the League of European Accelerator Based Photon Sources which are synchrotrons and FELs. There are several institutions. You, there are 19 facilities. You can see facilities all around Europe. And it's a very important point here. We have a partners and one associate member. And the associate member is Sesame. And Sesame is, uh, has been, from the very beginning, an important part of LIPS because also, uh, as uh, we have heard, uh, there have been projects uh, funded by the European Union, but also uh, where all, uh, several of the facility, facility of LIPS have been collaborating with SESAME to develop instruments also in SESAME. And this is uh, an example of how the interaction between different infrastructure is really the future for, for us. And here we have uh, Biomera, Sesame is partner of Biomera and is associated to LIPS. So Biomera is somehow also related to LIPS, uh, as, as we know. And uh, uh, another example is this beam line that has been mentioned, uh, BITS, uh, the beam line which makes tomography, which is the exact complementarity of what you have here next door. This is very important because you train the people here and then you can go to do the more 
um, uh, with more resolution the experiments in bits. By the way, one, one of our beam lines that we are, uh, should come into operation next year is similar to bits, so I hope to have your people also in, uh, in uh, Barcelona. Then, which kind of science we do? Uh, and here I want to, to mention the fact that, of course, uh, everybody now is talking about sustainable world. I think this is something that in the, uh, in the society has uh, reached all the levels, uh, starting from the society and then uh, up to the politicians. And uh, uh, we, have been, we are convinced that uh, we have to move from the model of exploiting all the resources of, as if they were unlimited to keep the resources and to provide a, a sustainable uh, progress. And where are the synchrotrons there? There are several synchrotrons. Uh, we have seen LIPS, but there are others in, in Asia, in Japan, Japan in um, in China, in America, uh, one in Brazil, uh, in Campinas, uh, one in Australia. And we are part of the solution. And uh, I want to mention this, uh, this uh, um, uh, web page, Sustainable Development Index. I invite you to, to go there. This is an index we show, which is the contribution of each country to this sustainability in the, in the earth. The, this index, the highest, the better. The highest are the uh, blue colors. The red is the worst. Uh, it goes from zero to one. This index increases when uh, there is a good life expectancy, there is education, there is income, so in the, let's say, rich part of the world. But uh, it decreases when, uh, for the CO2 emissions and the material footprint. So we see here clearly that there are countries that need really to work on the part which goes on the, in this red part. Because uh, countries where the life expectancy of the region is, is good, they are on the red part. So how the synchrotrons uh, the signs that we do, how we participate in going towards the green, if not the blue, at least towards the green color. First of all, all what is related to life expectancy, which means health, food, and we really help the health, uh, the medical doctors, the research from life science. This is an example of what we see at ALBA. At ALBA, we have uh, one uh, beam line which, where you can do the tomography of cells down to uh, 20, 30 nanometers resolution. It's uh, similar to Biomera, but with uh, a different kind of X-ray which uh, in a highest resolution. You can uh, see all the proteins, uh, you can resolve the proteins uh, down to the atomic resolution. This is an essential tool for the pharma companies, for example. It's something that has been helpful during the COVID to develop uh, uh, models and to develop drugs and vaccines. This is another example of an uh, experiment, experiment, a study which is done at ALBA on COVID, where you see the, the, the cell uh, where you have the coronavirus. This is the nucleus of the cell, these are the mitochondria. This is a cell which is half infected and then as the, the infection goes, everything in, outside the nucleus is destroyed. Or you can see here, this uh, are the, the same data, sorry. The same data, okay. Where you can see these blue small dots, these are the virus inside the cell. And these are data from, from ALBA, as there are all in other synchrotrons. So this is a powerful tool for understanding diseases, and it was important to be there when there was the urgency of the, of the pandemic, because you cannot uh, create a tool in a few months, but you could, with the tools that were available around the world, to really 
uh, create the vaccine in few months. And this is because there were research infrastructures like ours, like yours. And this is another example, for example, for the CRISP uh, therapies, where you can see, really see, it's important, uh, this beam line is used, for example, from me medical doctors who work on uh, rare um, illness, that uh, where it's difficult to do clinical tests, because you need a lo lot of uh, time, and, uh, and therefore all of, uh, also of, uh, is, is uh, costly. But you can see, uh, if there are different uh, trials for uh, medications, which are those who really attack the, uh, the gene that you want to, to kill. And therefore, all the others, uh, those who, who work, uh, you go on with the clinical test, all the others you just throw away, and you don't go through the clinical test. So this is another important thing. Then, of course, health and uh, life expectancies, uh, food. Food is uh, one of the, of the important uh, theme for the, for the future of the humanity. And uh, even if in our synchrotron sometimes there are some nice experiments, for example, and now I, I talk to, to, to the ambassador, uh, jamón ibérico de bellota. We can see if it's really the bellota. <laughs> I think you can also just uh, taste in it, but I mean, there are something like that for uh, this. But the important thing is to develop the food for those um, uh, countries where it's difficult to get the, the right alimentation. For example, the, there is uh, the need of, uh, of selenium in our alimentation, and the, there is a study which is done at ALBA uh, on the different plants that are uh, um, uh, grown around Europe, and, and it's important also for, for Africa especially, uh, where you see where, is the, uh, where the selenium is missing and how to, to cultivate the, uh, the plants in order to make them more rich in selenium where it is needed. And uh, the same, uh, the same uh, kind of, uh, of experiment is done with this, in this uh, uh, interesting um, experiment, uh, a collaboration with the NASA, where uh, the NASA is uh, going to send the, uh, uh, the station to the, to the moon, and they are studying the possibility of growing plants in the moon soil. But the moon soil is much more uh, rich in, uh, in metals and it can be also toxic. And therefore, they have some moon soil and they grow the plants on the earth, but on the moon soil, and we got some of these roots to, to study how they are because they, they want to understand which can be used for the future of, uh, of, the, of the moon station. And talking of the moon, we go also other, uh, above the moon because we are participating together with the ESA, the European Space Agency, in a collaboration for, uh, with a beamline which is being used by uh, the ESA to uh, um, uh, align all the mirrors that will go into the Athena mission. The Athena mission is, uh, the big, will be the biggest uh, telescope of X-ray, based on X-ray, and they, they are building 700 mirrors, and uh, this is something that will be sent to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the universe in 2036, so it's something we are working for for the future, but you need to be there, work now for also for the future. And uh, we contribute also to knowledge and conservation of our cultural heritage. I have taken here something that is done in Sesame. Sesame has a, a, a strong activity on cultural heritage, and as we have in, in, uh, in Alba, here there, are, there, there is a study, a study done by uh, uh, Universidad de Politecnica de Catalunya on the modernist uh, glass, while uh, here you have something done uh, with on a Byzantine figurines of the Jordan Museum. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, our, our role also, always to increase that green part of the, of the sustainable, uh, is also training. Showing the, the society what we are doing, showing why it's important to have this kind of, of infrastructure. When I say this is a public infrastructure and it's important to have this public infrastructure, as it is to have good roads, which are public infrastructure, you need 
research, public infrastructure. And they are therefore going out to the society, doing the open days, uh, making uh, uh, programs for the students. We train students in, in ALBA and we, we also have pro programs uh, for uh, internet, for example, this Mission ALBA is dedicated to the schools of uh, the whole uh, Spain because of course, the children of the school, which are nearby Barcelona, they come and visit us, but those who are in Canarias, they, they will not come, but they know now about uh, the synchrotron through this, this mission. So this is to increase the green part, and now how to decrease the red part, which is the difficult part, I would say. Not that the other is very easy, but this is really difficult. So, uh, there are many activities on that. Uh, first of all, uh, of course, we, we need to go towards uh, climate neutral and smart cities, which means you need to develop sensors, memories, uh, then uh, new process, and especially energy, you need to have uh, clean energy produ production, you need to have good energy transportation, and you need to have a good way of energy exploitation. So here there is a long list of, uh, of uh, topics where we contribute. We are not solving all the things, but we contribute, and without us, the progress would be much slower. And uh, one thing, for example, are the batteries. Batteries, everybody is uh, connected to a battery. I was today... <laughs> always with my, my battery on the second flight died and, and I was desperate, okay, because I wanted to see this, <laughs> my final slides, and one is on the battery. And therefore the batteries, many of the batteries are, are based on lithium. Lithium is not infinite and it's getting more and more expensive, so you need to develop also other kind of batteries like based on calcium, on sodium, and these are examples that are done at ALBA as are done in many others. Then you need to develop uh, new catalysts and therefore uh, there is a, a strong interaction. Here you, you can see, when you see TEM, that is the the electron microscope, because there is the, the correlation between the different methodologies that we are using. And uh, environment, of course. Environment uh, is, is our... Uh, we need to take care of the environment. We need to stop uh, uh, damaging the environment. And we need to develop new catalysts for green, green fuels. We, have, uh, we are uh, doing experiments, for example, for uh, bacteria which are digesting the, the pet. And I want to show this, uh, this um, example from Sesame, uh, where they are studying the water which is uh, obtained through harvesting water vapor from the dis desert. Uh, we are all worried, especially those who are around the Mediterranean, of uh, the, uh, the fact that the climate is getting hotter and hotter and there is always less rain. And, and so it's important to find ways on how to take water from whatever is possible, and this is one example. And uh, we need new technologies, uh, 2D materials, magnetic materials, um, materials for, uh, for memories, for data. We are, when we talk of science, but not only of science, of everything, we need to have always more and more data. We need to, to store data, to have the possibility to transmit data. So, example of quantum materials, this is something that is also done in our facilities. So, Sorry, who are our, our users? Our users come mainly from the academic world. It means that they are public researchers, they are from universities, from uh, institutes of research, and they, are, uh, they come to ALBA, and it happens like that in all the synchrotrons, through competitive calls, where they propose their, uh, their experiment, and then the, those who are more excellent uh, are given beam time. And this is an example of what, uh, what has happened in ALBA in, the, in, the, in this 
decade of operation in which the number of proposals is more or less twice as much as the number of proposals of experiment that then at the end can be done in our 6,000 hours. And many of these uh, are uh, working together also with industry. The important thing is that if they come through the competitive access, which is also free, they have to publish their results. The results are public. While there is also the possibility of coming through uh, direct access as a company, paying for the, for the cost of the operation, and then the results are private. And here it's important for some of the, the we have companies like uh, pharma, nanotechnology, chemistry, and they use ALBA. And it's important that we have been, uh, in, during this period, there have been more than 70, I think this is all the 70, more than 70 industries coming. And from this, 60% are Spanish one. And when ALBA started, industry didn't know even what the word synchrotron, they could not even say the word, <laughs> it's something completely new. And now they are using us. And of these also, one third are SME, which is also important because of course they don't have the, in their lab this capacity and we show them what they are, can use from our, from our, our uh, instruments, which are their instruments, and these are example of the industrial use. For example, uh, this is BASF, uh, which uh, uh, worked with us for battery of an electric car, and but pharma industry, environmental industry, and so on. Our users. We started in the operation in 2012. In 2011, it was. Uh, already in commission and there were some experiments. And this is the increase of, of the users. And this is also a message for, uh, for uh, a starting research infrastructure. You start with few users. When ALBA was, was, pro was approved in 2003, there were 200 people in Spain uh, using synchrotrons outside Spain. And now we have more than uh, 7,000 users in our database, of which um, more than half are from Spain. And this is also, uh, you create a research infrastructure, you start a new community. Of course, the, uh, the, this year is the 2020, where we had less, less users, but uh, we did all the experiments. They sent the, the, their samples, and we were able to do the experiments during this year. And last year, it was already uh, fully normal. Here is where they come from, from Spain. Uh, these are the number of proposals granted over those proposed during the whole year. Of course, also it's important the vicinity. Catalonia is the, the, the region where there are more users not only because the vicinity, but also because it has many research institutions, but then also the other region that are uh, highly active in, in research, Madrid, Valencia, uh, País Vasco, Andalusia, and so on. And this is our in international uh, users. You can see that they come from all over the world. There are more than 40 countries which have sent their users to us. Ch Cyprus, not yet, but I hope from now we are opening, I, I say that we are opening the next hall in, uh, in July. It will be open for uh, all the month of July and, and August for the next, uh, for the first semester of 2024. Uh, and these are from Europe, of course, is where they come more, uh, especially Germany, France, Italy, and UK. Here are a summary of the, of the key numbers, uh, the number of experiments, the number of publications, the number of users, and uh, we have done more than 3,000 experiments. Uh, we are more than 240 people and increasing. Increasing also because we are looking at the future, and the future is to go towards the fourth generation. Synchrotrons started in the 60s, and they, they have been a continuous evolution of the different techniques, but there have been, uh, at some point, there have been steps in the evolution of the technique, and this is what we call different generation. And now we're going from the third to the fourth generation. The, the difference between the different, uh, in this evolution is that you increase the brilliance, more photons on the, on the sample, the resolution power, the coherence, and the increase in data management capacity by making the beam always smaller, more intense, and more, uh, with more 
capacity of getting out the properties of the matter we want to do. And, and this is uh, the evolution in Europe where this jump is being done. Some are already for generation. Uh, Max4 in Sweden, uh, S, uh, SRF has already done the, the change from the third to the fourth generation, and all the others are going on. And so we are here, we plan to do the, this change in, uh, in, at the end of, of this decade. And SRF, for example, can do the, now this, uh, this human atlas. I invite you to go to this web page, which is really very interesting. And what uh, we will do, we will move from a very good resolution, which we already have, to something even better, where you can see details, for example, in this flower. This is not with X-ray, this is my smartphone. But uh, just to show that if you have more resolution, you can see, for example, defects that you didn't see in the lowest resolution version. How do you do that? Doing the electrons, the electron beam, smaller. In this moment, the dimension of the electron going around ALBA is of the order of 50 microns. This means like uh, one hair. Uh, we will do with smaller dipoles in a, a different magnetic configuration, this dimension ti 10 times smaller. And therefore, the beam that it produces will go much, will be much more intense much smaller, and therefore you will get better uh, performance of the different beam lines. And uh, not only that, but if you have uh, the possibility of doing long beam lines, you can also increase the resolution and the coherent function. So you take more advantage of this jump in the accelerator technology by doing long beam lines. And this is also what we are doing, we, we have been granted, we have been uh, granted this plot nearby ALBA, here is where the synchrotron is, and the, there was a plot which was, is empty, it's still empty, but now there are some drawings on, 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 on our slides, because they are, we will do long beam lines, and these long beam lines will go towards inst uh, institution where there will be, of course, the experimental hall for the long beam line, but we are talking to different institutions to create new centers that will take the full advantage of having the beam line, the newest beam line. We are discussing these techniques of the beam lines now on the 4th of July. There have been a proposal with all the community involved and to create a center which do what uh, we were talking before, this complementarity and this talking together uh, with nearby institutions. And this is our expected timeline, uh, with, we call that period because at a certain point we have to dismount the accelerator, put the new one, so we will need one year for that, one year for doing the commissioning, and then we start again with ALBA2. And I want to, to mention also one important thing, which is the uh, socioeconomic impact of this kind of infrastructures. Uh, now there have been uh, several institutions that are uh, asking economists to, to do this study of how much each euro that you put in a research infrastructure, how much this revert to the society. And ALBA was uh, the, f the first one, I think, that uh, asked to Garcia Montalvo, who is a very famous economist in, in, in Spain, to do the ex-ante study. It was done when it was approved, but still was uh, at the beginning. And he did a study, and then he did again this study in 2010 when the construction was finished. And, uh, and now we have asked him to do the, the assessment for the ALBA-2. And uh, it's interesting to see that even without taking into account the science, just doing the infrastructure, just moving the people, just calling, uh, having the users, doing uh, this industry of science which produces new uh, technologies and the, that becomes competitive all around the world. This is something that reverts directly in the economy of the country. And uh, ALBA2 will be even more than that because ALBA2 be, be, will be a, a, a new infrastructure but using most of the infrastructure that is now at ALBA.
And with this, I thank you, first of all, for your invitation and for your attention. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Katerina, for this wide-ranging uh, lecture, uh, which has showcased I think very appropriately uh, for the occasion, the importance of synchrotron radiation facilities, their impact, as well as the interactions and synergies between national level laboratory infrastructures. And uh, we thank you very much indeed for, for showcasing uh, this um, uh, interaction and also the developments within the synchrotron facility for such complementary facilities. Now, I trust you are happy to take I'm some really questions. Of course I am. <laughs> uh, so now I would like to open... I take some water. Yes, uh, please do. So uh, it's my pleasure now to open uh, the um, uh, floor for questions. Um, and uh, we have also Mitsuko Miyauchi in the background there with a microphone. So if you can indicate to uh, Yuko uh, when uh, you would uh, be ready to ask uh, your question. Are there any questions, comments, or queries at this point? Um, Professor Nicole, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, warmest congratulations for this lecture. I was impressed with this as I'm doing uh, with uh, the human organisms as a medical doctor and as a de uh, dentist as well, an oral pathologist. I was impressed uh, looking at the cells. You have told that you can inject the cells because I'm also a microscopist. I am uh, using the transmission and scanning electron microscope, uh, showing the viruses as well, and in a high power mag uh, magnifications. So this is an impressive thing. How are you doing it? It is in in vitro cultures, or uh, you take seeds of epithelial cells, for example? No, no they, they are uh, full cells. You don't need to cut. The difference with the microscopy that you you don't need to cut it, yes. but it's full. Is they, they are in, uh, in cryo. They are uh, and and you just put. Uh, as here in Biomera, you put yes, uh, on the, the sample and then it rotates and you take a tomogram. And, and this beam line, I invite you to have a look, it's Mistral, it's called, and there are not many of that in, uh, around the world. There are a uh, few of them, one in, in Basie, one in, in ILS and one in Diamond. But uh, so there are few and uh, it's, uh, it's a special one. And this is something that it was done when ALBA was conceived. I was not there, so I can talk of this uh, uh, freely, saying that it was very well done, not only the part of the technique that you have seen, but also the decision on which beam lines you have to, to start with. And the idea was, let's start with some of the beam lines that are already needed by the community, and even if there are many in the, in the, in the synchrotrons, you need that, for example, the, the protein crystallography beam line, but then have some risk on some special beam line, and this was one of them, and it's, it's, it's a great uh, now asset of, of, course. of, of thank ALBA. You. Actually, thank you very much, it was impressive. And another thing also that I was impressed was uh, the molecules of proteins that you could follow up. Uh, for example, you can follow up collagen for tissue engineering with uh, those, I think. Have you done? I'm sure you have done things like this as biological membranes and those. Yes, yes. We have also an infrared beam line, which does also that. We have also um, a SACS beam line, a small angle scattering that is also doing something on the, on the tissues. We are, one of the beam lines that we aim to build is uh, Biosax for the, for the future also. Thank you so much, thank you. Thank you, Professor Malas. Thank you very much. Uh, I now can definitely say I understand what cyclotron is. Thank Great. you very much. <laughs> because I was reading about it, I'm a geneticist and obviously. Uh, so, uh, to me, this looks like a very big microscope. 
Yes, yes. Okay, in the field, and it has various beams uh, in every little corner, and obviously is hosting experiments. Now, the question is, um, how, I, I mean, the access to these facilities clearly are on merit, clearly you have valued, but some of these, uh, these technologies, very expensive technologies, of course, um, at some point, need to become the cost needs to become become more accessible to i wouldn't call it everyday use but i can think of some applications which are very critical to medical research now i'm wearing that hat for instance one of the biggest problems in treating cancer which is in principle a very simple disease is to understand how the tumor actually is organized because a tumor, it's like an embryo, trying to mimic an embryo, but it goes wrong. So, so, which of course, you cannot do this with tumor samples on a, on a kind of a, a diagnostic basis because that's an expensive piece of equipment. So, uh, it, it is a bit of a, a question for the future because the biggest problem in medicine is to see things Yes, that's the biggest problem in medicine. Uh, and to see the things in real life uh, and where in, in their in situ structure. So when do you think that uh, everyday medicine will actually have access to this kind of or something? Where do we go from the um, experiments? Well, uh, this is something that we are also discussing, and I was talking before with Andrea on how we deal with the different kind of access that uh, we need to offer to the community. Okay, because now we have uh, is the usual thing. We have uh, twice a year a call, uh, and then uh, the, the the users send the proposals, and they get the, their bin time after six months seven months, eight months, and then they come for a few days at the synchrotron. But uh, there are other things that uh, we want to develop, and it's something that is going on also through LIPS. Uh, is, uh, this is something that we are discussing inside LIPS. To have what we call the long-term proposals or strategic, uh, strategic access proposals, where it's important that uh, uh, the community which asks for that uh, talks to, our, to us and say, this is what we really need, and to develop together something that is not only the access to a single beam line, but is something more than that. We are going in this direction in some fields. For example, like I mentioned, it's not on the health side, but it's on the battery side, where we have developed a battery lab, which was uh, based on a grant given to one of the institution, uh, which is ICMAB nearby. They have a grant and they said, okay, we can do something for a battery lab, but we put it there in Alba so that it uh, allows also the other users to come and to work not only on the beam line, but also on the battery. And these centers that we are dreaming of go in that direction. We, ha we need to have centers that uh, if there is the community and the need, for example, one of the centers that we want to, to that we are preparing the proposal is what we call a uh, response for One Health. You know what is One Health? is the health of uh, everybody. And uh, to have a center where you can also have a biosafety level three, for example, that is there when you need it because there is an urgency, but it can also be something specially developed together with institutions, with a hospital, that they need a continuous access, then there is the way of having a partnership for that continuous access. And also this beam line I showed uh, with the ESA, ESA paid for half of the beam line. And they will use that for three years every day because they need that. And then the beam line will be used for metrology or whatever uh, needs. So this is another example of teaming up institutions and synchrotrons and having dedicated 
instruments for something. And the cost is the cost of the investment. I mean, the cost for the users is, is free. The use of, all of the synchrotrons is, is free. You have to, to have the uh, being granted beam time. And as you saw here, we are doing for 50%, 50, 60% of our proposals get the beam time. Of course, you, you need to have a, a good uh, proposal, but we are aiming at uh, developing our, I mean, the, the synchrotrons as they were in the, in the past were more like this, uh, different uh, beam lines, each beam line a closed world. Now we are talking of multimodal, of having uh, proposals which say, I want to use this beam line, this beam line, this microscope all together, or this beam line at Alba and another beam line at uh, Sesame. This is something that we are developing. It takes time as everything because it takes you need people and time, but is the, the direction one. And any, any suggestion, please uh, do it. Thank you so much. Um, any further questions or comments uh, to um, Caterina? Do we have further questions? Um, I would like to ask one, if I may. Um, you have um, been the director of ALBA now for, since 2012. Yes. Um, so what would you say has been the most challenging set of issues? Um, and what has been, let us say, the most rewarding um, uh, success uh, hmm. or set of, of rewarding um, aspects of, of directing such a large uh, uh, research facility? It's an interesting question. I mean, of course, the, the period of the, of the pandemic was really a challenge for everybody, and it was also for us, and also having the facility, first of all, we had to stop for few days, uh, weeks, and then start again. We, we started with uh, the request of a Farba company from the United States who needed uh, one of our beam lines to, to check on one of the um, drugs they were preparing for the, for the COVID. So we, we started like that. And, and uh, it was not only the fact of the organization, but the feeling that uh, I had to take care of the people, okay, of, of our people, of, of, of my staff because it was a strange situation in which you, we, uh, many people were um, ill or their families were ill, and, and then to, to keep the spirit, uh, I think that was a challenge. Of course, there are many challenges. I would say administrative ones are, are sometimes a nightmare, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, but this is uh, how, how life is, and of course, uh, uh, I would say the, the biggest emotions um, uh, come from when I see the, the science is done, especially. Sometimes I go around, the, I, I don't know who is doing the experiment, I don't have time to follow all the experiment, but sometimes when there is a visit, I go around, and then I go in each control hatch, and I say, what are you doing? And then it's wonderful, and this is wonderful. Then there are great, uh, uh, worries and great uh, reward from the people. I mean, this is the, the thing. Uh, the, the people, to see the, the young people that uh, develop and that they start their career and then they, they develop and become um, leading. I mean, this is really rewarding. And of course, if you see that um, there are people with problems as everywhere, then this is what makes you feel worse. Thank you so much, Katerina. Are there any further questions, comments? I think we can continue the discussion over the reception, but before that, and I think uh, what you also mentioned uh, gave a very nice bridge to uh, the occasion of uh, stating here that we now have in Cyprus uh, open doors uh, to 
synchrotron radiation facility that we are a member of, Sesame. Other synchrotron radiation facilities also as part of this family, and we have uh, heard a, a kind invitation from uh, Professor Biscari also to consider ALBA uh, in this context. And we have Biomera now uh, at uh, the uh, national strategic uh, infrastructure level. We also look forward uh, to the developments uh, spearheaded uh, by the Ministry uh, of Research, Innovation and Digital Policy in terms of uh, the platform for national infrastructures. And we are open for science. Thank you so right. much again, Katerina, for this wonderful lecture. One last thing that uh, I want to mention that in a few weeks from now, 10, 11 July, the Sesame Council will take place in Barcelona. Some of you will be there, I know. But it's a way of, uh, and there will be a visit, uh, of course, to Alba, even if the meeting will be downtown Barcelona. And it will be a pleasure to host uh, all the friends from Sesame to Barcelona. Thank you so much. And we thank you very much for hosting us uh, in Barcelona. Looking thank you. forward to it. Thank you again, Caterina. Thank you. I'd now uh, like to extend the invitation uh, from uh, the Ambassador of Spain, uh, the Embassy of Spain, uh, to uh, a reception uh, at uh, the foyer. Thank you for coming. Thank you again, Katerina. Such a pleasure.